Quick note, the holiday coupon on Building Your Wealth does expire Friday evening. We are really close to that. So check that coupon code out down below and email me for a bundle. I got over 250 emails yesterday and I'm blown away with the amount of you asking for bundle coupons. Email us kevin at meetkevin.com. Hey everyone, Meet Kevin here. The stock market is surprisingly up today under the possibility that we could say $2,000 stimulus checks. We've got airlines and cruise lines all doing substantially well today and Lemonade is turning into a 3X stock for all of us who've been buying that one. It's almost at $128 a share, it's nuts. However, uncertainty is also coming along right now because there's the possibility that we get a big fat delay on any form of stimulus. Right now, we know that Donald Trump is demanding $2,000 stimulus checks and $4,000 stimulus checks to couples. This came after we had a deal on $600 tiny, minuscule, crappy checks coming out, but at least we would have had a deal and I would have been able to shave as a Christmas present for Lauren because we said we'd shave when there was a stimulus check deal. Well, now that Donald Trump has not signed, we are back to negotiations. Democrats have already agreed and each side is attempting to brand the $2,000 stimulus check as their own idea. Trump obviously brought up the $2,000 stimulus check issue, but Democrats are trying to brand this as something that they have been requesting for a long time. Trump would be very likely to earn credit for making this happen though, if it happens, as Congress was dead set on providing these $600 tiny checks. So far, we know that the House of Representatives will hold a voice vote by noon on Thursday to get unanimous consent on the $2,000 stimulus check amendment. In fact, Nancy Pelosi wrote a letter. It's a dear colleague letter. Let's take a look at her letter quickly here. Dear Democratic colleague, just when you think you have seen it all, last night, the president said he would possibly veto the bicameral agreement negotiated between Republicans and Democrats. He said he would do so unless the stimulus payments were increased to $2,000 per person and $4,000 per couple. In negotiations, Leader Schumer and I repeatedly asked Republicans what would be the highest number the president would accept for direct payments. And they responded with sphinx-like silence. In negotiations, they would never go above $2,000. Uh, in some cases, they even proposed $500. That's interesting because we had heard $600 or $700. Maybe that was a Democratic idea, the $700. Yesterday, I said Democrats would go to the floor and ask for unanimous consent to bring up a standalone bill to increase payments. To do so requires the agreement of the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy. So this means we do need Kevin McCarthy on board. She's implying here that we actually do not yet have Kevin McCarthy on board in the House. So Nancy Pelosi is basically saying, hey, let's try to get unanimous consent on Thursday, but no indication that she's actually going to get it. There's nothing that we have yet from McCarthy. This agreement is necessary in the House and the Senate. We need McConnell in, in the Senate, obviously. If the president truly wants to join us in $2,000 payments, he should call upon McCarthy to agree to our unanimous consent request. Wow, look at that, putting the onus on Donald Trump. We are scheduled to go in for a pro forma session at 9 a.m. on Christmas Eve. We are awaiting word from Leader Hoyer as to whether Leader McCarthy will agree to or reject our unanimous consent. That'll be interesting. So now we've got a 24 hour sort of clock in terms of when we expect to hear a response from. Uh, at the very least, we've got to get McCarthy responding. But even if McCarthy goes for it, uh, talks are still going to be heavily focused on what Mitch McConnell says. The entire country knows that it is urgent for the president to sign this bill, both to provide the coronavirus relief and to keep the government open. Let us pray. Wow, okay, well, this, uh, this is uh, definitely uh, leading up to be a very interesting uh, Christmas holiday. We also, by the way, have a lot of confusion going on right now. Take a look at this, here's a tweet, and I mentioned this yesterday, but I just wanna reiterate this. Look at this tweet. Uh, this, this, unfortunately, it's tweets like this that uh, lead to a lot of divisiveness in our country between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, it's, it's not good because it's just wrong. There are no illegal aliens getting checks. In fact, this bill specifically prohibits illegal aliens from getting any stimulus checks. This reference to the $1,800 is simply because in Donald Trump's speech yesterday, he suggested that illegal aliens' families could get $1,800. That's because if you have somebody who has an ITIN number, which means they're an undocumented worker, but they uh, are supposed to pay taxes, they would get zero dollars. 
but their family, so maybe a husband, a child, and a child, they could each get 600, and obviously 600 times three is $1,800. So that's where that's coming from. But the illegal alien, that individual gets nothing. And so, it, but just be careful. This, this idea that illegal aliens are, are getting checks in this bill and that Republicans are stupid to have voted for this bill anyway or whatever, it's actually going to push us away from getting a, an actual deal, which I think most important right now is, is getting a deal and, and getting something done. Of course, I'm a big proponent of the $2,000 stimulus checks because I think that would be wonderful. But be careful if you see things like this. Now, uh, importantly as well, today is Donald Trump's deadline to vote for the NDAA or the NDAA becomes law, that is the National Defense Authorization Act. This means it's entirely possible that we could get another news event today and President Trump could come out and issue a presidential veto on the NDAA. If he does nothing, it becomes law. But we already know that Donald Trump is opposed to the NDAA because it doesn't include the repeal of Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act, which would put some limits on websites like Twitter and YouTube for their ability to, to potentially flag content that uh, Donald Trump posts, uh, also that anybody posts. It would take some liability protections away from these companies. And Donald Trump sees uh, that as a crucial part of him being able to run again if he needs to in 2024. If he runs again in 2024, he doesn't want to get censored or flagged while he's running. It's not good for optics. And so that's one of the reasons that Trump is so adamant on getting the Section 230 uh, repealed in the NDAA. Uh, he, he does also brand it as being something that's good to fight China, and uh, and he's got other arguments as to why the NDAA should be uh, repealed, but that's, that's the big sticking point right now. So we could get a veto today from Trump on that. Uh, this also would give Congress two things to get done before really December 28th, which is when the government shuts down. Uh, they have to deal with the military spending bill, the NDAA, otherwise the military shuts down, and they have to deal with the Corona bus government funding deal and stimulus bill. Now, uh, here's the result of this. We really have three paths forward here. Mitch McConnell accepts. Obviously, this would be the best case scenario. We'd all welcome that with open arms. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of the $2,000 stimulus checks. I know the Federal Reserve is. Federal Reserve says you can't spend enough. I mean, in theory, you could do $2,000 checks a month. I'd be a huge proponent of that. No indication that we'll see Mitch McConnell come back with any larger amount, though. I doubt that would happen. Uh, now, uh, some say that it could expose Mitch McConnell as potentially coming across as weak if he accepts the $2,000 stimulus checks, that he was, you know, arm wrestled essentially by Donald Trump. But I don't think that's as much of an issue as I think there is a potential issue that if McConnell goes for the $2,000, and he has a big Republican delegation of even if it's 20 to 30 people in the Republican Party in the Senate that are super anti that kind of spending, that you could actually sunder the Republican Party and go into the January 5th election with a divided party. And that would create the biggest risk for Republicans being able to maintain control, maintain control of the Senate. Excuse me. Uh, so that is a big risk factor. Uh, now, some are saying this is, uh, you know, Donald Trump's payback for Mitch McConnell acknowledging that Biden uh, is the president elect or saying that Trump's uh, troop withdrawal plan from Afghanistan was a bad idea. I don't know. I think that could be like a fringe benefit to Donald Trump. But I think the bigger idea here is uh, pushing to get those uh, I'm going to call them legacy checks if I can, because if we get this $2,000, they will be part of Donald Trump's legacy. So option one is McConnell accepting. Uh, option number two and three come with a much bigger risk, though, and uh, they actually have a, a real possibility, which is uh, unfortunate. Now, the two possibilities for option number two and three are that, two, McConnell counter offers to include more provisions or more desirable provisions for Republicans in exchange for giving Democrats and Trump the bigger check. That would create a lot of complications. We'd really be back to the drawing board. Remember, we had the Pat Toomey Amendment that delayed negotiations by four to five days. If you get another counteroffer here, it's going to be very bad to get something done this year. Uh, option number three is McConnell just doesn't say anything, uh, and then Kevin McCarthy doesn't say anything. Republicans just go dark. That's going to force Donald Trump into a situation where he's going to have to veto the, uh, the NDAA. If Republicans stay dark after that, then the government's going to shut down on the 28th, and we're going to have a, a pretty calamitous moment here. We're ending to 2020 uh, until we get to day 10 of uh, this, this stimulus bill needing to get vetoed by Trump, at which point Trump could veto 
the bill uh, after uh, after day 10. Otherwise, it becomes law. This is essentially him pocket vetoing the bill for 10 days. It, it would lead to, again, a calamitous situation. The government shuts down. Unemployment benefits expire for 12 million Americans. The eviction crisis is over and eviction protections are all of a sudden, oh, here we go. No eviction protection extended. Guess what happens? January 3rd on that Monday when everything's back to work. Boom. Uh, you're going to get millions of evictions get filed. Uh, things, things could get, I'm sorry, uh, it's actually January 4th is the first Monday. But uh, things could get pretty bad here if we go with, with one of those options. Uh, it is also possible then, and this is, this is an ugly option too, it's entirely possible if we don't get a response in, in an effort to prevent the government shutdown, you get Republicans who say, you know what, we need to look at this bill more, we need to take some more time, let's do a one month continuing resolution and basically just kick this entire stimulus package down a month to when uh, either Joe Biden is president or Joe, uh, Trump ends up overturning and he ends up as president. And then we deal with the bill. We'll have the new Congress, we'll have a new president. So it's entirely possible that here we are thinking checks were coming next week and this entire package could just get delayed a month. Uh, again, that means unemployment expires. That means there won't be vaccine distribution money. The $600 checks get delayed. School funding gets delayed. Rental relief gets delayed. Evictions start going crazy. I mean, we could go down a, a dirty slope here. Uh, in terms of things that could happen. Now, I do want to address uh, the the um, foreign affairs money, uh, and I just want to. I'm not taking. I don't want to take sides on this. Uh, but what I want to say is, Donald Trump. Uh, this is true, uh, but it, it shouldn't. It, in my opinion, it shouldn't say Trump budget proposed. Yes, Donald Trump is complaining about money going to Cambodia. Uh, going to Burma, going to Egypt, going to Pakistan. And this sounds crazy. Like, why is there, why are there so many billions of dollars going out to these, these uh, foreign uh, areas? And a lot of these are millions, right? 85 mil, mil, you know, here's, here's a billion right here. Uh, these, are, these are big numbers though, 25 million for democracy in Pakistan. Th these are foreign affairs expenditures, right? This is foreign affairs. That's what our country does. And we could, I could have a whole channel dedicated to foreign affairs. It is a very complicated and convoluted, uh, you know, constant negotiation. Because look, you give money to Pakistan, India is going to be, yo, where's my money? It's very touch and go. It has a lot to do with trade. So it has a lot to do with energy. It's a disaster. However, it is true uh, that the White House, it really shouldn't say Trump, uh, but the, the proposed budget, they, they did ask Congress to give these amounts of money. So it was really no surprise that 1.3 billion was going to the Egyptian military. There was no surprise because it was in the proposals. But these are White House foreign affairs proposals. Uh, and because it is the Trump White House, people are calling it, well, that's Trump's proposal. He should have known. The odds are Trump didn't know, in my, in my opinion. I don't think Trump knew that the White House proposals were including this money. Those are fair enough foreign affairs proposals from his cabinet, right? Uh, and, and the fact that they are in the, the sort of limelight right now is really just because they're attached to the stimulus bill, which is very complicated because like, we're supposed to be talking about COVID relief and now we have the big government funding bill that's attached to this. That's why you hear, why is money going to the Smithsonian Museum? Well, yeah, that's part of keeping the government funded. So it gets, it gets a little complicated. Additionally, at the White House, a letter was sent out this morning to staffers via email saying that they should prepare for departure starting the week of January 4th. And then a few hours later, a new email came, in, uh, came out saying, oops, never mind, we weren't supposed to send that one yet. Ignore the first email. This obviously comes at the same time as Donald Trump is doubling down on his reelection campaign since he, uh, well, is in sort of the spotlight right now, more so than before. Now, a quick note, I do just want to add a little note of clarity. Some people were wondering why it seemed like I laughed when Donald Trump in that Twitter video yesterday said, and therefore I am demanding $2,000 stimulus checks uh, I didn't laugh at the idea of $2,000 stimulus checks. I think $2,000 stimulus checks are a wonderful idea. I laughed because this is literally like, like I, I pictured in my head a bull walking into a china shop and just literally kicking up its legs going, <laughs> like just the, the, the image of what that implication was, like what, what kind of catastrophe this was about to cause was, was hilarious in, in that sense because it's like, 2020 is so eventful, we can't do anything but laugh at it uh, and laugh at what the heck is going on. 
But I just want to make it very clear. I, I'm a big proponent of the $2,000 stimulus checks. I think it's great, and I'm very hopeful that Mitch McConnell, uh, you know, comes around and, and does the right thing. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Make sure to get your, use that coupon code for the amazing courses on building your wealth down below. Hundreds of you have, by the way, emailed me for a bundle coupon. Uh, I've got a lot of catching up to do again. Uh, yesterday, I had, I never had that many people email me for a code. So send me an email at kevin at mekevin.com if you're interested in building your wealth. And folks, we will see you next time.